Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, on behalf of Salient Process, we are really grateful that you're spending this time with us to learn about how to max out IBM Maximo um, and why that's important. The title of today's presentation is just that, Maxing Out IBM Maximo, Automatically Discover and Automate Daily Task Work with IBM Process Mining. Uh, there are really two key focuses in the world of digital business automation right now. One is AI powered digital labor platforms and the other is process mining. Today's presentation is going to be focusing on process mining um, and what that means for companies who use Maximo and teams at companies that use Maximo. Uh, in terms of an agenda, this is what we're working with today. I'm going to introduce myself and my colleague Jared here in a moment. Going to give you guys just a two minute primer on what is IBM Maximo and some emerging challenges um, that are cropping up at an alarming rate in Maximo communities. Then we're going to spend the majority of today's webinar on a demonstration, a live demonstration. If we have time, we're going to open it up for Q&A, and we have a couple call to actions for everybody to consider at the end of the presentation. Little introduction for those of you who do not know Jared or myself. Uh, Jimmy Hewitt here. I have spent eight years between IBM and Salient Process in this digital business automation space. I am responsible for solution sales in the US East and Latin America. And I'm also the host of Salient's podcast called Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast. Um, the star of today's show is IBM Process Mining, but the man behind that mouse is my VP of client services, Jared Michalek, who is responsible for solution sales of US West and Canada. In addition to that, he is a serial tinkerer where he is responsible for some of digital business automation's most exciting accelerators, including Automation Compass, Blueworks Insights, and now Maximo Mining. Between the two of us, we have almost 30 years of experience in this space. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy to have Jared join us on today's webinar. What is IBM Maximo? In short, it is an enterprise grade asset management tool. What does that mean? Um, IBM bought this company in 2005, and it is one of the most successful and beloved software products in the marketplace today, but not many people know about it. Um, what is asset management? The most common use case is buildings. So building management, maintenance request, service requests on big buildings, right? Um, but the sky is the limit on what assets Maximo can manage, right? Think about an oil field. Think about the heavy equipment on an oil field or a construction site. Think about a fleet of 18 wheelers that FedEx may own or pick your courier. There are assets everywhere. These assets need maintenance and to be maintained. That is what Maximo does. It is uh, one of the, the most popular, if not the most popular, asset management tools in the world. That is Maximo. What are some emerging challenges? So let's start in the top left corner, work our way uh, around. Number one is manual data entry. Uh, the, in the real world, there are Maximo users, asset managers, facilities managers, et cetera, who receive work orders, maintenance requests, and other similar inputs throughout their day. Uh, you could get five work, work orders or maintenance requests, or you could get 500, depending on the size of your team. These maintenance requests and work orders need to then be manually keyed in to the Maximo system, site name, site number, submitter ID, 
so on and so forth. That's manual data entry that's that's happening and very pervasive now in the Maximo community. Uh, number two is once a task has been created in Maximo by entering in a work order or a maintenance request or a bill of materials for a construction site, a task is created for somebody to go then do something like like perform the maintenance request as an example. There is a in-app workflow module within Maximo that from conversations we've been having and, and buzz that's stirring in Maximo communities, this in-app workflow module has been, um, how do I say, decommissioned by many Maximo teams and users. Uh, so they're not getting workflow value out of, out of the in-app uh, workflow module. Furthermore, a challenge related to task routing is what happens for tasks that involve systems outside of Maximo? So all of your work cannot surely be done in one system. It could involve things like email, a chat service, a, uh, a any third party system that's used outside of Maximo. Coordinating work across those systems is another challenge that's cropping up in the context of task routing. And then number three is maintenance decisions. The cost of labor is skyrocketing and therefore using the right person for the right job is becoming more important than ever. Um, there are some companies like a utility firm, a utility company in Spain that has bolted on the IBM ODM, that's a decision management tool to their instance of Maximo and they're saving 10 to 40% on labor costs, depending on the day. Um, again, that's just getting more granular with maintenance decisions and, um, and saving on rising labor costs. Those are the three big challenges. The fourth one before I transition over to Jared is where to start, right? Most Maximo communities are aware of pain, uh, but specifically where and why should they start with solving one of these three um, items over the other is the question. So where to start? And um, if only there was a, a an intelligent, automated way of uncovering where to solve these challenges. Jared, do you have any ideas? I have a couple. All right, let yeah. me turn it over to you. Let's jump right into it. So it's our belief that seeing is believing. So let's Take you through a live demonstration of some of the things that we're doing with our clients and hopefully this will stir some ideas and uh, and thoughts around how we can better utilize our investment in our IBM Maximo footprint. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is IBM Maximo. We have an internal instance that we installed. This happens to be version 761, but it works with the most recent versions as well. Um, and what I want to do is just similar to what Jimmy did is just a quick high level view of what Maximo does for those unfamiliar, what it looks like, and, and then we'll dig into some of the ways that we can pull some of that information out and, and make it more visible, more uh, actionable, and, and to really uncover some of those insights. So within Maximo, if I go ahead and log in, there's a number of different modules. And as Jimmy said, there's a number of different use cases. Assets could be anything from buildings to vehicles to devices to um, anything in between, right, that, that we see this in certainly the utility space, but also in financial services, retail, uh, manufacturing, right? There's, there's a number of areas and a, a high number of uh, great use cases for managing and tracking and understanding uh, your assets, as well as all of the peripheral processes that are happening uh, for those assets, such as work orders, service requests, maintenance, um, and so if I go into this and look at the work order uh, information and do a quick search on uh, uh, some of the work orders that are inside of this tool, uh, we'll see that there are, is a number of inf a number of detailed things here. And this is more geared towards um, things like maintenance requests and other kinds of jobs that are happening um, where we have these details and, and different activities and, and history. But it's kind of hard to, from this, pull out like what is the actual status of where we're at and where are we in the process and what is the overall process. Uh, IBM Maximo does provide some work order functionality as well, uh, or uh, workflow functionality. So if I go into the workflow uh, view, 
Um, there are a number of different workflows that are built in here. Uh, if I open up uh, service requests flow, for example, it does give me some basic capabilities around building the workflow. The issue is that a lot of times when we build this workflow, it doesn't always follow this path and it doesn't always adhere to some of the constraints and it, it sometimes takes different divergent paths. It's also not accounting for some of the ad hoc work that's happening that maybe we're not even aware of or that certain users are doing maybe incorrectly in, in some cases. And so how do we get visibility? How do we get an understanding about the, the data? This is where some of the accelerators from both IBM and Salient Process come to play. Uh, process mining is a way for us to basically stitch a process together and discover process based on information, usually one of or three pieces of key data, an activity name, a timestamp, and some kind of correlation ID, right? So in our case, that correlation ID could be something like a work order number or an asset ID or a service request ID. Um, and the really nice thing about IBM process mining is that we're able to stitch that process together with that data, um, but we can look at it from multiple different dimensions, right? Now the discovery process or the discovery of that process is the first step, um, and that's not the goal necessarily, right, to, to uncover the process. It's also to understand and then track and measure the process, especially as we start to make improvements and add auto automations. But one of the big fallacies about process mining, and not just IBM process mining, but all process mining uh, uh, systems out there, is that all you need is a log file and you can just import the data, right? That's, I think, a very misleading uh, view of how process mining works. And in fact, a lot of times the log file is not going to tell you anything about the business process itself. It might tell you about the system activities that are occurring and maybe some errors that are happening within the system, but it's not going to show you the actual process as it, as it stands. And so what we've started to do as an IBM partner is look at other systems, other capabilities uh, that we can pull data from through the supported APIs that those systems uh, provide. This includes things like Salesforce, ServiceNow, SAP, Open Pages, and now IBM Maximo. Uh, and so what we've done is taken the Maximo uh, API and looked at some of the different ways that we could interrogate the data and found that we can actually extract that data automatically without any intrusion, without any installation of anything within uh, the IBM Maximo environment. And all we need is an API key. What we've done is expose this through a browser that we can actually see uh, some of the information uh, within the tool. And I'm not gonna extract all the data here. I actually have a seeded set of information, but just to give you an idea of how quickly this works or how easy this is, we can plug this into any Maximo instance as long as we have an API key, which we can generate. I can add some filters, so I can look at this from the perspective of work orders or service requests or job plans, um, and we're extending that list as well. And then maybe add a limit between the start and end times that I'm looking to extract a record limit, and then some kind of status filter where I might only be looking for specific types of status. And once I do that, I can pull that data automatically and then extract it in a way that process mining will understand. Now that's good for a demo, and that's gonna be how we do this demo today. But in practice, what we can then do is create a bridge between Maximo and process mining to have a real-time feed because we have the API on the IBM Maximo side and we can feed that directly to the API that IBM Process Mining supports to basically have a real-time event feed directly from the Maximo system. So you saw pulling back 500 records there, it took a few seconds to pull that back. So if we have, let's say 20,000 records, it's gonna take a little longer. But once I have that initial seed data, then I'm just looking for the deltas, then I'm just looking for the incremental events that are occurring, and we can do that in a near real-time way. Uh, which is very effective and also provides that kind of in-the-moment visualization within the tool. So what I'm going to do now is, based on the data that I just extracted, I'm going to export it, and I'm going to get a CSV file that looks something like this, right? which has all the information, and this is just an example set of information that we can utilize uh, within IBM Process Mining, but you can see we have a work order ID, we have different kind of contextual data, not just the timestamp and the activity name and the correlation, but also things like what's the estimated end of life? What's the start of life? What's the resource that's actually doing this? What's the group or organization that's working on this? 
Uh, what's the warranty expiration time? And so we have this additional contextual data because, again, the discovery piece is the first of what we see as kind of three phases of process mining. The second is the analysis, right? The digging into that data, understanding why do we go down this divergent path in some cases? Why does it loop back? Why do we have these bottlenecks? Uh, and so really digging into the data. And then the third phase is that measurement, right? The ongoing monitoring and measurement and, and kind of comparison between how the system's working today versus how the system could be working in the future, right? And this kind of non-intrusive, very intuitive way that we can pull the data from Maximo makes it extremely easy to then import that into process mining. Let's see what that looks like now. So in process mining, what we're gonna do is create a brand new project and I'm gonna import that data that I just exported, right? So I'm gonna create my new project and we're going to upload that sample data. And then all that's left to do is for me to map that data to those corresponding fields, right? So you can see it's the exact same data that I just reviewed in the CSV, and I'm just gonna add some correlation including custom fields. So we can include other types of custom fields to this. That'll be, or that'll be the rule. And bear with me one moment while we just finish this out. Now, this is a one-time thing, right? As I start to add additional um, records to this data set, I don't need to map it anymore. It'll remember what those mappings look like. And so I can incrementally feed that without having to go through this process each time. All right, and once I do that, I'm ready to visualize the process. And now what I get is a picture of what, in this case, this work order process actually looks like, which is going to likely be different than what the process is that we built in Maximo or even that we understand the process to be, right? And, and seeing all these divergent paths and different uh, elements. Now, this is a bit of a sanitized version of this. Many times when we do this, we get a plate of spaghetti that we need to start to unravel and start to understand why is it going down these paths? What is the happy path? What is the process that we understand it? One of the big things that we are not gonna show today, but certainly as a follow-up, we, we can start to dig into is the reference model, right? How do we think the process works? And we can use IBM Blueworks Live, which is essentially the other side of the coin to process mining to say, here's how the business understands the process to work. This is what we think happens. And that may also include steps that are not included in our process that we see here because it's hard to get things like phone calls and emails and conversations that are happening, the manual steps that are not tracked within Maximo or even any electronic uh, device. And so we can overlay that and understand what is it, where are the gaps, where are the, different, uh, the differences between how we think the model works and how the process actually works. In addition, we can start to dig into some of the other elements. The darker the boxes, the more frequent those boxes are hit. So we can see some of the patterns and some of the, the uh, more frequent activities. We can also look at this by things like average duration, right? The darker the purple, the longer that step takes on average or medium, ma maximum, et cetera. We can apply cost information. So if I assign resource costs to each of those steps, it will calculate the cost based on how long those steps are taking. We can also refine the process. So if I want to maybe simplify this diagram, I can reduce this down to more of a happy path, right? What are the, the activities that happen 80% of the time? And that's going to help us kind of weed out some of the, the noise, right? And, and kind of focus in on the key activities that are taking place, but we can move that up and down. Um, I can apply other kinds of filters. I'll show that in a moment. Um, and then I can also look at this by resource or by role. Right? So if I'm looking to kind of narrow in on a specific resource, what are the steps that they're involved in? And it will highlight only those that this anonymized um, user is, is set up to view. Within each of the activities, I can dig into some of the details there as well and understand how often these things are taking to see the um, activities or the people that are working on this the most or the least and looking at any of those fields that I've added. So the more data that we can gather in that extract and the more information we can use it in, as import into the process mining, the better our analysis is going to be, right? Understanding what's the estimated end of life of these activities, right? And seeing that the frequency of those going 27 to 28 are the most frequent by 72%, right? So we can really get an understanding of why certain steps are being taken, what is the data that's representing some of that information and how can we better improve that? 
And we can also start to filter some of this. So I can go in and say, maybe I'm only looking at specific uh, asset types, right? Maybe I'm going to focus in on the HVAC steps, which is only about a, a quarter of these processes. So if I click on that and I say filter, it's going to reduce the information down to those steps that are only attributed to HVAC, right? So now I can go in and dig into some of that, those details, start to understand more about that. And so it's this pivoting and mixing and matching of the information that makes this so powerful. It's not just the discovery of the process or the visualization of the process. It's about understanding and, and the why behind why the process is working the way it is. All right, and not only that, but we can also turn this on its side and look at this from the perspective of a BPMN diagram. And this allows us to really start to understand more about uh, some of the details about why this, this process is working the way it does. This also can be exported directly into BlueWorks Live, which gives us a, a picture of the process that we can then add some maybe more contextual data, things like inputs, outputs, cycle times, um, who's responsible, what systems are involved, and other information about the process. And this also allows us to do things like rule discovery, where we can go in and see some of those paths, some of those decision points, and understand why does it go down one path or the other? Right, and seeing maybe some of the details behind each of those uh, divergent paths and seeing what are the different reasons behind each of those, right? And seeing the, the branches and the splits and the, the various aspects there. And then lastly, as I mentioned, the point of this is not just in the discovery and the understanding of the process, it's in the ongoing monitoring and measurement of the process. And so as I go over to my dashboard view, I can have a real-time dashboard feed where I can dig into certain processes and understand the, the processes that are active, where they are in the, the process, what the expected path, what the downstream possible next steps are going to be, and start to apply certain types of KPIs and SLAs to that to really make that process better and to start digging into some of those details and understand more about you know, what the process is doing in the moment. Right, and, and really um, have that kind of real-time feed. And this is fully customizable. And so I can take any of these um, dashboards and add new dashboards and start to really uncover some of the information. And in this case, we're still applying that filter, right? that HVAC filter, um, where we can see the number of cases, which is the number of um, basically unique instances, and then the number of events that are occurring within each of those uh, unique cases. So with that, I'm gonna pause. Um, Jimmy, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, maybe to, to show some next steps. That's kind of what I wanted to show. I know quick and, and, uh, and simple here, but uh, really th it, there is some magic to this, right? In that we are able to pull that data out of the IBM Maximo system automatically. There's really no um, intrusion as long as that API is available to, uh, to our instance, or we can, in we can have that run locally as well. So it could be behind the firewall to generate that data, that's going to allow us to uncover this information and be able to really start digging into it and understanding more about what that process is doing. Amazing. Thanks so much, Jared. Very, very exciting, particularly for the Maximo users, particularly for folks interested in automating their experience, particularly for folks who have the ability to help those customers do that with process mining.